The Whirlwind was the first series production aircraft that had a true monocoque fuselage structure, the form being an ogival tapering tube comprising of only the outer skin, the longitudinal T stringers with a number of short actual intercostal channels. Where the fuselage connected to the cockpit, the transport joint skin plating required a complex doubler. There are no structural frames in the fuselage. Three lightweight frames are fitted to resist any axial shear buckling, but provide no stress continuity to the stringers <coughs> to which they are not connected. A single half hoop frame and two quarter frames connected to a port and starboard gusset plate provide the foundation structure for the retractable tail wheel lock plate on the vertical fin spar when the undercarriage is in the down position. To provide the strength to resist the vertical and horizontal bending moments exerted on the fuselage and resist the torsional forces exerted by the tailplane and rudder in flight, the skin sheeting was made from very thick magnesium alloy planks that were continuous from the transport joint at the cockpit to the fin spar. The 12 standard wire gauged curved tapering skin planks having a variable radius and taper along their 12 foot width with an average width of 16 inches presents a formidable manufacturing challenge. The Whirlwind Fighter project was fortunate to have a very good relationship with airframe assemblies on the Isle of Wight. Airframe assemblies are in possession of the original rolling machinery commissioned by Westland for the production of the Whirlwind's fuselage skins. While a very expensive process, the Whirlwind Fighter project felt it was entirely justifiable, not only for the rolling of the skin planks, but also as a measure of continuity of the manufacture of P7056 by the use of some of the original manufacturing equipment. Once the skin planks had been delivered to the Whirlwind Fighter Project's workshop, work commenced on the manufacture and fabrication of the other fuselage components. For economies of scale, a single assembly jig and transport structure was fabricated that would serve to assemble both upper and lower fuselage sections and provide a transport cradle when the fuselage was moved down to the museum at Hawking. The process of constructing the fuselage dictated that the upper section be constructed first. The nature of the fuselage construction also requires that it is assembled upside down, allowing access to the 185 feet of linear riveting required to join the skins and stringers. At one inch pitch, this requires some 4,800 holes to be jig drilled, 2,400 countersinks to be produced, and then riveted with high strength rivets. An additional 700 holes, 350 countersinks and rivets being required for the internal substructures and doublers for the various fuselage openings. Please keep an eye open for the next phase of construction, the lower section and mating of the two sections to complete the rear fuselage. The Whirlwind Fighter Project is a not-for-profit charity run by a group of volunteers dedicated to reproducing this iconic World War II fighter. If you feel you could assist the project, please visit the Whirlwind Fighter Project Facebook and web pages. Donations can be made through the Whirlwind Fighter Project's GoFundMe page. Also, 
please visit our active partner in the project and home of the Whirlwind fighter aircraft and associated artefacts, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum at Hawkinge. Please subscribe to the updates and many thanks for watching.